to get a good good like that. So these are the hands right after the Sunday morning service. We'll have that. Uh, we'll have that meal. So be looking forward to that. And then, uh, then that night we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, that evening we'll probably just have a, maybe the play track or whatever. But we probably won't have service that night. So uh, uh, just remember those days. And uh, I think that's about it. Huh? When in Bible study. When that wants to be in the Bible study. Lives with the way uh, she's doing the Bible study uh, program. And so uh, here at the church at 9 30, that Bible study, women's Bible study. And uh, you're going to eat breakfast? Is that what you're going to be doing? So, trying to break the Now, let me tell you how I show up with a breakfast dish. I'm saying I'm a play. <laughs> Want somebody to dish it on her. <laughs> so, uh, don't do that. Bring the dish, bring whatever you want to eat. And, uh, you'll enjoy the list of putting water in the back. She's a, uh, if you didn't know her, Elizabeth, she is a, uh, she would call it a school coach. That's what she is. She's a school coach. But uh, young come along, and so uh, she uh, just started teaching. She's teaching now, but she's teaching at home. That's what she's doing. So uh, just remember that you'll get a blessing out of that. I'm certain. All right, we're well, going we'll go ahead and get right on in to service. And you can go ahead and take the Bible and turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number eight. Jeremiah chapter number 8, we'll read one verse this morning. Jeremiah chapter number 8, verse number 22. While you're coming, I'm going to find a song. I was sitting there thinking, how much God has done for us. Today I face the mountain 
Uh, there was a great turning away from God. They, uh, they had a great religion. They had wonderful religion, but they didn't have God in it. Uh, they had a form of God in it just as they do today. They're denying the power thereof. And uh, even uh, this week I was uh, I was reading and thinking about some things. Now I just want to go ahead and throw this in there this morning as I'm sharing my heart with you. Uh, we, we can't compromise the teachings and the doctrines of the Word of God. We can't compromise that for unity. We can't just hook up with any old thing that's coming in and going out here in the world. Uh, because everything that, uh, everything that's out there, even if they, uh, some of them, uh, is not of God. Amen? Yeah. Y'all, I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. Uh, we, uh, we've got to go with the Lord and uh, do it. And that's what Jeremiah did. I used to preach a message a long time ago about Jeremiah. And I looked for those notes this week and couldn't find them. But Jeremiah was the preacher that never got an amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody was against him. And his family was against him. The religious world turned against him. The country turned against him. Uh, he was a prophet to... Uh, the, uh, the the southern kingdom, which was Judah, uh, those uh, uh, two tribes, those two nice tribes that uh, made up uh, Judah, uh, they were all against him. Everybody was against Jeremiah, but he stood firm and he stood for what he believed in the word of God, and he preached the word. So Jeremiah, such an interesting man, his ministry uh, approximately from 627 to. 586 B.C., uh, right around 40 years, Jeremiah. Uh, the key verse of the book is chapter 2 and verse number 19. Uh, he said, This thy own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. Can you not see that today in our midst of living in? Uh, I believe, you know, you know I, don't, I don't know why I was thinking this week uh, about the United States of America and the godly heritage that we've had down through the years. And uh, it seems like that we're uh, going away from that. Uh, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a hoping that one day we'll come back to the Lord. Uh, but God here is talking to Judah. And he said, Thine own wickedness shall correct me. You know, he says, One place be sure you sin will find you out. And, and can I attest to that today? I've done things in the past that I didn't think nobody didn't know about. Uh, but them things have a way of. You know, it's a big old circle. What comes around goes around. Like that story I was telling you at that time about uh, when I was a little boy, I, I got that pack of cigarettes. Went over to Laurel Thicket, and I was sitting on fire smoking cigarettes. And I got through, and I rubbed that good black dirt all over my hands. And uh, covering that up, you know, nobody's ever going to know that I did that. Uh, but there's, uh, you know, my own wickedness that found me out. I, I went over there, and, you know, if I was just went out, stayed outside, go to run, run around, well, I'd done whatever I was doing, I probably would have got out, I don't know, probably would have gone somehow or another. But I'm saying, after I got through, and I, I, I done you know, hole, put cigarette butt in, cover, I'm going to cover up it, but cover up the crack. Went over there, walked up on the front porch, held the breath, walked straight to the bathroom, and washed mine. <laughs> Won't brush my face. But not a soul around, I didn't see no fucking. About that time, bathroom door. My mom, Matthew? I said, yes, mine. She said, if you did smoke. I thought, dear Lord. This woman, I thought, she wasn't, I didn't see her in the house. Where'd she come from? I thought, well, I keep my mama. Yes, my mom, I've been told. I was about 13, you know, about 13, 14 years old. Where'd you get? I said, you know, why'd she ask me why? I don't hold back cigarettes in my car. I thought, well, I, I'm fixing a lot of mama now. Uh, because if I, you know, if I tell her I'm going to hold back, she's going to have some money from me, but it's far enough. So, uh, I 
said, well, I'm, I'm sitting here, Doug. Why didn't I turn y'all around? I said, Doug Smoke. I said, well, what are you doing tonight? What are you doing do that night? Don't be a big cigarette, Doug. Doug Smoke. So uh, I felt bad after she went away, and I wanted my cigarettes up, and I threw them up my dick, just above my head. And, uh, but uh, I said, I'll let you say this. Listen, uh, that's evil. You, they can't rest against God, and God said, be sure you're going to get found out. Things ain't no difference today in the United States of America. I'm afraid things are coming full circle. And uh, things are going to get found out. Thy backsliding shall reprove thee. That's the message that Jeremiah is preaching. Most of Jeremiah was unpopular. His audience, as I said, was Judah, the southern kingdom. You know, uh, Israel, it came about that uh, they formed, they became a uh, a great country, God said to Nathan, they had 40 years of King Saul, 40 years of King David, 40 years of King Solomon, and then after Solomon, things went south. Uh, you have the Israel, the ten northern tribes, and now you've got Judah, uh, the two southern tribes, and each of them have got kings. Now at this time, Israel, uh, the, the ten northern kingdoms that already granted the rest of the first of God, uh, they were already uh, uh, in a bad way. And so Jeremiah preaches to them that here in Judah. The subject is, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no healing? Is there no hell? Is there no hell? Jeremiah, chapter, the first ten chapters, there are three distinct messages from God to Judah. We'll go over these right quick by way of introduction. The first message from God is threefold. In Jeremiah chapter number two, verse number two, he reminds them of the days of blessings and deliverance. Maybe that's why I'm paralleling. Judah, the way they were going with the United States of America. We remember the days of blessings and deliverance, don't we? We remember those days of blessings and deliverance. How that God delivered this country. How that our founding fathers believed in God and founded this country on the Word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. George Washington's favorite song uh, was Psalm chapter number 2. Every time they met, every time they had chapel, it, they made a song on John Little Two because that was his favorite song. Oh, it was, and, and today we cannot forget. I know that the uh, Reverend Day is coming up. Uh, sometime, I get uh, the next weekend, I don't remember. Church looks good. Thank you for doing that. It's Saturday. Uh, but listen, with, he's trying to remind them about God's blessings and deliverance. Let's worship Him today because of His blessings and deliverance. Right. Let's don't be robbed of the blessings. The blessings and deliverance of God, they come with a cause. Oh, but this is what Jeremiah's first message is doing. It's threefold. He reminds them of the day of the blessing and deliverance. One place in God's Word, He said the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Number two, in uh, Jeremiah chapter number two, in verse number 13, he reproaches them for forsaking him. I'm going to read this verse two, right? We, uh, we'll get back to it again in a few, in a few minutes because I'll be reading it again. But in chapter number two, in verse number 13, he says this, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have used them out cisterns. Broken systems that can hold no water. You say, Teresa, what are they doing? They're trying to do it all with the works of their own hand. These big systems, uh, years ago I was studying about those. They dug them out in the limestone, it, just like a reservoir that we have today. They dig them out in the limestone, these big systems. Some of them could hold, uh, uh, from the big cities, they had some systems over there. They were 50, 60,000 gallons of peace. And what they did in the rainy season, they tried to channel and funnel all the water that they could into the cistern. Sometimes the cistern, the limestone, would get a crack in it. 
They left the rope down in there and take the slime and the pitch. Try to fill up the cracks so they wouldn't lose all the water. But God here has given them, uh, He's given them an example that they can understand. My people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Ah, spiritually today, we don't need to forsake it in this country. We don't need to forsake the fountain of living water. And they've given unto themselves cisterns, broken systems that can hold no water. The works of their hands was just what they could have That's what he's making us. Comparison to it. That's your second message from God. <coughs> Here's the first message from God, the second part of it, the third part of it. See, the minds of the days of blessing, the living, they were broken to them for forsaking them. But then thirdly, in that first message, he accuses them of adultery. Chapter number 2, verse number 11. 11, as a nation changed their gods, gods which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory to that which does not cross. There in that Sunday school lesson, God said, I ain't going to help you no more. Go call on them little G-Gods you've been worshiping. Boy, they got in a bad state right there, Brother Lord. They got in a bad place. Them little G-Gods don't help us. We, we got to serve the true and the living God. Thank God today that we have a God. Oh, I'm glad today that we have a God just to love us. But they fell into adultery, even after all God done for them. The second message from God, He chastens Israel, that northern kingdom. And that chastening had no effect on Judah. They said, well, southern tribes, we're down here watching what's happening to the ten northern tribes. Look at them going into captivity. Look what's happening to them. But it didn't have any effect on you. It's almost like they were saying, I ain't going to happen to us. It, it won't happen to me. Ah, oh, but God, in His love and in His mercy, was sending them a message. God is sending a warning. He's sending a warning to Jew. Chapter number 3, uh, verse number 15 and 16. The Bible says this, and I will give you and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord. Ye shall say no more the heart of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember. Neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Oh, the Lord. He's sending a warning. He's sending a message. And he sends a message, number three, in that second message to him. God sends a message of mercy. God will proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou back to the sweet in Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not call mine to the fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep my anger for it. Hallelujah. Now, I'm glad today, I praise God, that there is a balm in Gilead. I'm glad even in the midst of uh, backsliding, even in the midst of turning from the Lord, that God is still merciful, and His hands of mercy, and His love still rescues us. Right. Amen. Oh, He loves them. He loves you. He loves Israel. That's why he's sending a man. That's why he's sending a message. That's why God is doing what he's doing. And I've already said it. We can read the book of Jeremiah and draw a parallel between Judah and Israel, God's people, and those of us today at this time. Here. God always has a witness. The prophet Jeremiah was God's witness. Jeremiah began his ministry 60 years after Isaiah. He is 
name means Jehovah is high is all in God. His very name is a testament to the God of heaven. It's all in God. Jehovah is high. Jeremiah was born a priest but became a prophet. And what sums up the character of Jeremiah? I'm going to read to you what I believe sums up the character of the prophet Jeremiah. Then I said, I will not make mention of his name, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not say, Hallelujah. A lot of times we use that verse for, um, maybe preachers use it, uh, you know, talking about uh, the desire that they have to preach. But can I tell you today that you can adopt that verse into your own into your own life and even in your own personal self? Uh, oh, uh, don't grow weary in full bearing. Sometimes we, uh, uh, sometimes the load gets heavy. Sometimes there's uh, things that make us even want to throw in the towel and quit. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, that we get like that, all of us do. Uh, uh, but unto God, listen, uh, His Word was in my heart as a fire shut up in my bones. I will make His Word a lamp under my feet and a light under my feet. I will hide his word in my heart. When that word, when that seed gets down into your heart, oh, it's found a lodging place. Amen. Yeah. It, 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 in the time, in the time when you need God the most, he'll minister to you, I believe, through his word in your heart. And I believe that's what sums up the character of Jeremiah. I was weary of forbearing, he said. I could not stay. There was the fire. There was the desire to keep on going. Jeremiah was a witness. He was called of God. Jeremiah chapter number 1. Verse number 4, this is what the Bible says. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the valley, I knew thee. And before thou came forth, thou was the womb I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. <laughs> then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a child. There ain't no excuses with God. When God was dealing with me, I would meet to preach. <laughs> I said, Lord, I can do that. I don't know how to pray. It's just like the Lord spoke to my heart and said, well, none of them other fellows did either when I called them to pray. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, he brought it back to my mind as I was praying. He said Moses was 80 years old when I called him to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Israel. So uh, there just ain't no excuses with God. Oh, God, he, uh, he does that. He, he calls, he directs. Jeremiah said, Lord, I can't do that. I'm a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not I am a child. Well, thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and who whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And he gave Jeremiah the boldness he Gave him the uh, courage to do what he needed to do. He was called to God. God put that day in his heart. Jeremiah, as a witness, was not only called, he was clear in the message that he preached. Jeremiah was clear in the message that he preached. In chapter number 8, in verse number uh, 1 through 12, we'll see the clearness. We see the clearness of his message. Oh, he, he goes down through there. We won't go through all of this portion of Scripture for the sake of time. 
But he uh, completely and sends a clear message to Judas about what they need to do. He was consistent in what he did. In other words, he was faithful. He was also connected with God. Jeremiah was a man that was a witness. Not only was he a witness, he had a word from the Lord. He had a word of wisdom. Wisdom in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 9, verse number 10, says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. The word from the Lord, what Jeremiah was doing, was uh, not only being a witness, but being the, being the Word, giving them the Word. The Word of wisdom. Then there was the words of mourning. They shall spread them before the sun and the moon. Verse number two, and all the hosts of heaven, whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gentle, nor be buried. They shall be for dumb upon the face of the earth. God tells you what you're doing. It's going to be all in vain. Here's the warning. And he tells Jeremiah to stand. I tells him to proclaim the word of God. There's the wisdom of Jeremiah. There's the warning of Jeremiah, but there's the war. You say, preacher, what is that? That's the mercy of God that Jeremiah was preaching under them. Chapter number 2 and verse number 7 through 9. He said, I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. And the priest said, No, where is the Lord? They that handled the law knew me not. The pastors that transgressed against me and the prophets prophesied by Baal and lost after things that do not cross. But listen to verse number nine. Therefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. That's God having mercy. I believe that's what he's still doing today, brother Ray. I believe that's the bond that holds the world together and the United States together and even evil together today is the sure mercies of God. I'm glad today that we have a merciful Lord that we can fall into His hand. So Jeremiah, he, he's trying to relate to me. There is a bond in Gilead. There is a God in the heaven that says, and so there's the word. There's the words of his mercy. He said that. There's verse number nine of chapter number two. Yeah, well, I believe with you. God is beckoning unto his people. Jeremiah chapter number four, verse number three. Heaven seems to break up the foul ground and so not a unfold. With Jeremiah, the word Jeremiah, but then there's a way. In Isaiah chapter number 55, verse number 8 and 9, listen to this very carefully. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts and your thoughts. And there's only one to get that. The problem in the world is the danger of the I believe one of the greatest problems, and really one of the greatest problems in the big religious world, is mankind trying to bring a holy God down to the level of unholy man. They're trying to bring God, a, a, a God that's sinless, a God that's holy, a God that's omnipotent, 
for a long time. Have I broken my nose? This is chapter 2, verse number 20. The first time by now say the Bible will not transgress. Put upon every eye, and you'll remember every dream through that woman. Play the Lord. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy a rice seed. How thee art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine? God's got a pretty strong word for them at that time. But there's also a right way. Jeremiah was trying to show them the right way. I have here this morning, I wondered this a long time ago. I dug it out this week because I was thinking about this man. This is the bottom of Gilead. It's the morning. You know what bomb is for? It's for heaven. It's for heaven. It's for hope. You know, I remember when I was growing up that uh, there was an old timer over home that lived over, over another line. And uh, when I was a young man, he was really old. He was probably in his nine. And I was going by all the time to see him. Uh, he got to where he couldn't go to church no more. And uh, he uh, he was out there one day, somebody told him, said he's cut his hand real bad. And uh, I went by to check on him, and sure enough, he had a big baby on it. And he, he cut his hand real bad. They said, man, I won't tell you something about bad wounds. Now, he's just an old white man, right? Always wore overalls. We'll back up to no work. He said, when I get a bad cut, I don't remember. He didn't weigh it. He said, I don't walk. He said, it'll heal up. Now, a lot quicker if you keep it dry. And uh, he had this old uh, Wally's Linamine. Now, I ain't got a whole lot of confidence in that stuff. Y'all might. Uh, but now it worked for him. They uh, might. But uh, that was a sort of a uh, that was sort of his ball. That was kind of like what he did. <coughs> this here is the bomb of Gilead. <coughs> it's a sign. If you get a wound or you get a cut, something's wrong with you, you should be able to take this and uh, rub a little bit on what ails you and it makes you feel better. That's what this is for. This ball of Gilead. But can I tell you today, the sir, I... Jeremiah was asking the question. He said to Judah, Is there no wall in Gilead? Is there no hope for my people? Well, can I tell you today there is a wall in Gilead? <coughs> there is hope. There is a remedy to that. His name is Jesus Christ. He came to love, hope, heal, and forgive. I'm glad today that we're living. In the New Testament church age that we're living in, that we ain't back yonder under the law and under all that, and under God's judgment, but praise God today, uh, uh, so many, many years before Jesus ever came along, uh, uh, the prophet Jeremiah, what he was doing was prophesying uh, uh, because God knew that sometime uh, that uh, some folks was going to need a message of encouragement uh, and somebody was going to ask the question, uh, is there no hope today? Is there no help today? Uh, is there nothing that can be done? Uh, is there no bomb? Is there nothing for the wounds of this world? Uh, uh, but can I tell you today that there is a bomb in Gilead today? Mm-hmm. And his name is Jesus Christ. Oh, Thank God that there's a bomb for whatever ails you in your life. Whatever befalls you in your life. Thank God for Jesus today. For the backslidden, for the burden, for the bound down people of God. There is a bomb in Gilead. Now Gilead the name, just the name, the term Gilead, it means a hard, stony ground through this world and through this walk of life. There's going to be some 
hard time. There's going to be some stony ground. Some of you, they say, for being out plowing and hit a rock. You've been out plowing, you've been out digging, you've been out hoeing. That old stony ground, oh, that's, that's like this life. There's some stony times. There's some hard times. We're going to go through sometimes that place of Gilead. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God that there is a law in Gilead. As I close this message this morning, as you're saying, go ahead and say it. Just as you just look up, please. As I close this message this morning, is there not a law in Gilead? I was reminded of Jesus, the great physician, the one that can heal all wounds, whether they be physical, spiritual, whatever wound you have. Jesus is the great physician. I'm closing in Matthew chapter number nine. He entered into a ship, passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought unto him a man sick of the policy, laid on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick, Son, be of good courage. Thy sins be forgiven, man. You say, Christopher, what's going on? There's a bomb. There's a remedy for a sin sick man. Here's a man sick of a fault. Here's a man that can't do anything for himself, but the first thing Jesus says to him, thy sins be forgiven me. Jesus alone is the Lord. He is the salvation. Here in Matthew chapter number 9, verse number 2. He said, be of good cheer. Jesus brings happiness. That bomb of Gilead, it brings happiness. It brings joy to your soul. He also used the word forgiven. Jesus not only brings happiness, but he brings healing. He healed this man. He will heal all that comes to him. If our heads are bowed this morning. There is a law today. Not only in Gilead, but there is a law in the world. There is a law. Just go back to church. Maybe you have a need today in your life. You have a need in your heart. I'm going to pray for you today. Will you raise your hand? They may not see that hand. Hands up all over the house. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you. God bless you this morning. Anyone else? Anyone else this morning? We're going to pray. Thank you. I see that hand. Oh, thank God today for our response. Anyone today? Maybe there will be a one that would like to come forward. Just say, Preacher, I want you to pray with me. I'm burned down. I need to I need to get to Jesus. There's something there's something weighing me down today. Would there be a one? Whatever your need is. You want to come forward. We'll get the altar with a pray. I want to give you that opportunity today. The bomb is is for the healing. It's for help. And it's for hope. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you today. We're thankful for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. God, I thank you for this service. I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, Jesus, that you are the great physician. Lord, now I pray, God, that you will take my scattered word. God, I pray that you'll bind them up the way only you can and minister to the hearts of these people through the Holy Spirit. God, you said your word will return to you, Lord. I pray that you'll encourage every heart, every hand that was raised here today, God. Lord, you saw them. God, they have a need. I pray, God, that whatever that need may be today, Jesus, you are the day for this. You can help them today, God, to look to you. God, we thank you today for the prophets of old. We thank you today for you, Jesus. 